Mm. Okay. I'm on a Zoom call. Nothing. <laughs> Okay, we can get started. I'm actually um, just trying to figure out how to share my screen because <laughs> I've done this before, but not on this one. Um, so we're talking about homeschool homeschooling high school today because I, I know a lot of people have questions about how to do that for a diploma. And it's uh, it, it's it, it, it can be kind of complex and really overwhelming at first because there's so much information out there uh, about that, but I, I'm here to kind of walk you through the process today. Um, I wish Judy was here to tell me how to um, share my screen because <laughs> I don't know how to do that on here. Um, does anyone know how to work this? Are you on a computer? Yeah, I'm on a computer. Which... Um, there should be a, like when at the bottom, it should say share screen. Like yeah. Is it, it not working? It doesn't have it this time. I, I usually do have that actually. Or try try Alt S. Okay. Thank you. Oh. Thank you. That can everybody see that screen then? Yes. Thank you very much for your help. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, like like I said before, there's Judy is not able to join us today um, because she's really ill. And so I'm gonna be doing the presentation. Um I'm I'm Golda. Uh, I don't I didn't put any write-up on here about who I am, but I, I work in Alberta. Uh I'm also on on the board of the Homeschool Association and I represent Northern Alberta mostly, but here I'm for everybody today who who needs help figuring out how to how to navigate the the uh, you know the homeschool high school thing for credits um, and that Judy would have been here but she's ill she's uh, usually the one that is the lead on these presentations and she's the president of the homeschool association and she she has written a book uh, for Albertans. Uh, the Happy Homeschooling Handbook. So, if you ever want to, uh, if you ever want to order that, she she uh, sends those out by the mail. And I wanted to just go over some of the guidelines that we have for any webinars, and that's that your questions are never stupid. They are not too. Oh, okay, I think some. Think I'm I'm gonna ask someone. There we go. Um so I also want people to know when when we're asking questions, we're just gonna try to share airtime as much as possible. And of course we respect everyone's opinion, even if it doesn't match up with our own. So I want to talk first about the educational choices in Alberta. There's uh, lots of different choices. Uh, we have public or Catholic, uh, public or Catholic schools, which is the public school system. They're run by trustees. They have full funding. They get about eleven thousand dollars per student per year that goes to the division or the district. And, and they allocate that to schools in order to pay for things like teachers and, and materials and buildings and buses and all of that. Then we have the independent school. Uh, they're usually run by a board of directors. They also they get about 70% of the funding that a public school gets. They also often charge tuition. And they uh, will often have like, they have classrooms and buildings. They also do print modules for, uh, Home, for homeschool uh, homeschool, and they also often will have online schools. Then we have charter schools and we have more of them in Alberta now since the change in government a few years ago. They also get full funding and they also offer lots of different ways. And then we have home education, 
which is probably what most of you are looking at, and you have two choices with home education. You can uh, meet the 22 solo outcomes, which is the the non-Albertan uh, the, the non-Albertan one where you just have to meet 22 outcomes, which is a lot easier. Um, or you, you can try to meet the Alberta Program of Studies outcomes, which is about 1,400 per course of outcome, uh, outcome in the Program of Studies outcomes, which means that you have to teach those specific things. Um, in home education, if you choose to uh, participate in a classroom or an online class, you're considered shared responsibility. Uh, however, most of the time, like now, because the Alberta government has decided to offer extra funding uh, for one five credit course for any student in Alberta to take an online course from any other school, and that's called a non-primary registration, that's not included in shared responsibility. That's an extra thing that they started adding last year. If you're interested in doing home education, the, that model, the deadline to uh, register is usually September 29th or sometimes September 28th. And uh, you do get funding of about, of about $901 per student to cover the cost. So that's a reimbursement fund. So that's kind of how it's structured in Alberta. You have like four choices of educational choices in Alberta right now. These three are always going to go with the Alberta Program of Studies because they're required by law to do that. And in home education, you have a choice. Um, so that's kind of just an outline of how the system works. But we're talking mostly about high school today. So we're going to focus on the credits. And we'll talk first, I guess, about why people would want to homeschool their child through high school, because it's not easy. And there are some frustrating moments and it's very overwhelming at first. As the first year is the worst, I promise it gets easier after that. But I, I, I've talked to a lot of people about why they're leaving the school system. I, I personally used to be a principal and I've been a high school teacher for 16 years before I got into home education and started unschooling my own son uh, who is now 14. So I, I, I know a lot about why people <laughs> decide to homeschool. Um, the, probably the top one is either a medical concern or bullying. Those are probably the top two reasons that people homeschool their children. Um, a lot of people decide to homeschool because they their special needs of their child are not being met. Uh, another reason is that they have academic delays or they're or they're academically gifted and they need a different uh, a different atmosphere perhaps but even a different uh like a different pace and different materials so you have the choice to use the materials that suit your child um busing is another reason people in rural areas sometimes leave home at 7 30 in the morning to get to school and they're gone until 4 30 or 5 so that's another reason people do it uh and and despite the fact that homeschool has a reputation for being faith-based a, a lot it, that is not actually the top reason that people do it but it is one of the reasons that they want their children to have an education that is more in line with their values um, sometimes people decide to travel and so they want the the freedom to be able to travel and not worry about um, you know ha having to be in school or even being online at certain times and then uh, scheduling. Some people are involved in sports teams and they want to uh, they want to be able to travel in, in and really participate fully in that. And then some and, and quite often it's the school itself where they live that they don't want they don't want their child in that particular school because there's been an issue with a variety of things. <laughs> so that's the top reasons people choose homeschooling. And if you have anything any other reason that we should add to the list, please, <laughs> please let me, please let us know so we can add it to this slide. Um, I just want to talk about high school and how how many choices you have with high school. Like there's certain required courses for high school, um, but there's a, there's a lot of other choices too, especially the CTS classes. Um, there's work experience, a, a way to get credits through work experience. There's there's the registered apprenticeship program if your school 
um, if your school happens to support that. And of course, there's special projects. There's lots of choices of, of how to get credits in high school in Alberta. Um, Judy has this chart of the comparisons between different provinces because sometimes people want to go to a university or college in another province. So she has this chart here about what would match up with that. And um, she also wanted me to share about the notification form. So if you decide to register in Alberta for homeschool and high, any kind of homeschooling, you have to fill out this notification form. Um, and I'm sure if you decide on, uh, if you if you if you decided to do this, um, your any facilitator, any school would be able to help you fill it out. And then we, we talked too about how you're not totally alone when you're homeschooling. Like there is other ways. So if you decide to do parent directed home education for high school credits, you do have choices about what you could do. So it's not all on you. Some of it can be outsourced. Like there, there is lots of US online choices of schools. There's massive open online courses that are free on, on a list, uh, it's called mooclist.com, I think. There's co-ops that can help you. There's tutors out there that help mark work and help um, like guide kids through difficult pieces of the courses. A lot of a lot of people uh, do student led, so the student is com like completely responsible for their own courses and and writes the program like the not the program plan but the the course the course outline that they're how they're planning to get the credit or uh, the course proposal sorry of how they plan to get the credit. So there's lots of choices that it's not just on the parent because the first year can be very overwhelming and very difficult to navigate. Um, but I find the second year is usually better. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, this is uh, someone in the trades because a lot of kids are interested in trades. And it's a great way to get started is like actually getting some experience in a trade that you they might be interested in. And then they can get at, if they join a work experience program, they can get credits for high school credits for their hours that they put into their work experience. So just to go over this part, the grade one to nine in Al or kindergarten to grade nine is not mar is not required. You do not have to do any credit, anything for credits from kindergarten to grade nine. There is no credits for grade kindergarten to grade nine, and there's no prerequisites to get into grade ten. Like you do not have to meet the Alberta program of studies in grade nine in order to go into grade ten. There might be some information that they might need to do or skills that they might need to learn, but they do not have to do grade nine before they go into grade 10. It is not a pre prerequisite in Alberta. However, if you do want a government diploma or transcript, um, you would have to start in grade 10, um, starting to work towards getting credits. And that's only if, not everybody wants a diploma or feels that they need it. And we'll go over kind of why later. So um, that those marks go on a government transcript and are recorded in a in an information system called PASI in Alberta. And so when you submit work, uh, the work for uh, credits, the, the facilitator and the principal will submit the marks if if they've received them to PASI, which is the student information system. And then it goes on a transcript, which you can access yourself later through a, a website called MyPASS. So I that that's kind of I know I'm giving you too much information at once. <laughs> a lot of people write this kind of Alberta education plan, but this is only for the solo outcome. So that's not for credit. Um, this is kind of what most people do for grades one to nine if or grade 10, 11 and 12 if they're not interested in getting credits. This is one of the Alberta home education plans. There's lots of them and different schools have different ones. Um, this, however, is a proposal. Uh, so this is what proposals look like. So one of the requirements that schools have, if you wanna do a, a high school credit course is they want you to write a proposal. And the proposal is just to say, where are you getting the resources? What's your project? Like, how is it gonna look? What, how are you going to get the credits? Um, what are you gonna use? 
and what's the marking scheme at the end of it. So this this particular one is a self-directed um, one. It looks like language arts. Oh yes, English 30-1. And it would be worth five credits. So each school has different course proposal outlines. This is one of the ones that Judy used, I believe. So this is how, how she laid it out. And quite often a course proposal will also ask you about your marking scheme. Like, what does it look like? How, how, what, what's going to be worth what, just like a teacher would do. And then at the end, so you would first submit this. And then at the end in June, you would submit something called a course evaluation or a, a an assessment. So this was, this was a self-reflection piece, which is not always required. Um, this is an explanation of how you got this mark. And so what you would do is you would submit this along with all of the work that the, ch the student has in their portfolio uh, to the facilitator, which is also a facilitator is a certified teacher. And so they have the right and responsibility to submit marks to PASI through the principal. So that's that's kind of the how it works. So first you write a course proposal, then you do the work that you plan to do, and then you submit that along with an assessment or evaluation on what the mark should be. And what the what the facilitator would do at that point is they would go over the work that you that you submitted and make sure that the mark is accurate. And if and if it is not, they should have a conversation with you about why. So um, so and they they often have an expertise in marking certain types of work. And often I know facilitators that don't have an expertise in say chemistry, they might like uh, collaborate with one of their colleagues to say, can you help me make sure that this is accurate, Mark, because I don't know. So that's kind of how it works uh, overall. And it, it's, 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 not, it's not as hard as it sounds at first when you look at all this writing on this paper. It, it's actually, it, it gets easier after the first year <laughs> because then you're kind of used to what it looks like. Um, so in, in order to get credit, so you, ha you do have to switch from those solo outcomes to uh, like the outcomes in the program of studies. And this is a very small snapshot of what that looks like. Now, um, this is, I believe it must be for art. It, it maybe, or perhaps a lower grade for science, but it, oh no, this is art. So this is uh, some of the art outcomes and it's, it's actually very, a small piece. So this would probably be more like 10 pages if you went and actually looked at the whole thing. Um, so you, you basically have to meet these outcomes. And part of the problem is that the, in the program of studies it's written in teacher speak. Um, it's, it's meant for teachers. So it's, it's tough to, to dice, decipher it, I guess, sometimes. And that's what your facilitator is for. They, they're a certified teacher and they've learned how to do that and they should be able to break it down for you a little bit. Um, sometimes it's so overwhelming, but there's a lot of different, there's a lot of different ways, like, like for the language arts, I'm thinking 10-1 language arts, like there's, there's a list of a huge list of things that they have to do, but you can combine them. Like one of the, one of the writing pieces that you must have in English language arts, 10-1, is a critical analysis of something but you can combine that with a novel that you read. So, you, you know, you're doing the novel, but you're also doing the critical analysis of that versus the film, which is another outcome. So you kind of can combine them into one assignment. So just so you know, it it, it looks like a lot, but you, what teachers do is they combine them together so that they can meet all those outcomes. Um, I, I would like to mention though, something that people find surprising at first is that most major universities don't actually require a diploma and a lot of colleges don't and Nate and state do not as well. They don't require, they often do not require an, any out government diploma for admission. It's not, it, we all kind of, I know I grew up thinking that if you wanted to go to university, you had to have a high school diploma, but uh, you don't actually. And when I did my bachelor of education, I actually wrote a paper on that, how that wasn't actually a requirement at all for any 
for for any of the universities I applied to. Um, so yeah. it might not be required for post-secondary, just so you know. There's other ways to get into post-secondary, which we'll talk about in a minute. Um, what, but if you did want a high school diploma, basically you would have to take you'd they'd have to get 100 credits within grade 10 11 and 12 some of those requirements are com which is the career and life ma life management course in grade 11 they have to take grade 10 phys ed they can combine uh 10 credits from cts which is career and uh technology studies um, and there's a lot of different ones. And if you want to see, um, let me just, I, I brought up the high school. This is, uh, I actually have this open, the high school diploma graduation requirements, which is on alberta.ca education guide. Um, in order to get a diploma, the 100 credits have to include English language arts at the 30 level. So in Alberta, um, 10 level courses are, is grade 10, 20 level courses is grade 11, and 30 level courses are in grade 12. And when it says this 30-1 or 30-2, in language arts and social studies, dash one means the university prep course, and dash two means the uh, like the college level or, or life or, or like it's a lower level of the course. And it has lesser requirements um, for writing, specifically for language arts. And it's the same with social studies. So grade 10 and 20 are a, a prerequisite for 30. So you have to have 10, 20, and 30. So that means, and each of these is worth five credits. So already you have, by the time you get to grade 12, just in language arts, you have 15 credits. Social studies is the same. At the end, it's worth Third, uh, it's worth 15 credits. Math, you only have to go up to grade 11, and that can be 20. So 10C is the required math for grade 10, and it's a prerequisite for 20-1 or 20-2. And then math 20-3, the prerequisite is 10-3. 20-3 is the, um, the trades math and the business math. And 20 2 is kind of in the middle, and 20 1 is something that you would use if you wanted to go into physics, engineering, or anything that was math based in university, um, like being a physician and anything like that that would require the higher level math in university, you would have to get the dash one course. And these are required. So, up to, only up to grade 11, you have to take math. In science, you only ha also have to get up to grade 11. Um, so you have to do either 10. So in in Alberta, uh, science 10 is a prerequisite for science 20 or biology 20 or chemistry 20 or physics 20. So what science 24 is, is the prerequisite for science 24 is science 14. And if you get if you take science 14, you can't take biology 20 because the prerequisite is science 10. I hope I'm not going too fast. I know that's a lot. <laughs> Um, I'm just trying to um, explain how the credit system works in Alberta and how what all these numbers mean, because I know some people are not from Alberta. When I moved here, it was really confusing to me. I did not know, like 10, 20, 30, what does that mean? So I'm just explaining how that works. Another requirement for graduation is physical education, um, Phys Ed 10. Uh, now you can get three credits or five credits in Phys Ed 10. If you put 75 hours of activity, it's it's uh, three credits. And if you put 125 hours, it's five credits. And that's based on something called the Carnegie, Carnegie model, which means that they exchange credits for hours. And e each credit is supposed to be worth about 25 hours of time, which is not always true, but that's that's kind of how what it's based on. And then the the other requirement is career and life management, COM, and that's a grade 11 course, and it's worth three, three credits, and it's a requirement for graduation. And then you have 10 credits in any of the combinations here. So career and life and technology studies, fine arts courses, second languages, physical education, 20. 
um, at registered apprenticeship program and all, all sorts of courses at the at, at various levels. And then you also have to have 10 credits in a 30 level course that's not the core courses that are required. So there's lots of different choices there, especially the CTS courses. Okay. Um, does anyone have questions at this point? Because I'm not, I'm like not even part way done, but I just want to make sure I'm not going too fast or I'm not losing anybody. Okay, I will take that as a no. <laughs> am I going too fast? You can write in the chat if I am. Okay. All right. Um, sorry, I have to click through that. Um, so we talk about the different high school homeschooling route, routes, because like I've mentioned, a diploma is often not required for, like it's not required for getting into post-secondary. So some people do decide to just go fully parent directed with, uh, with no, with, with, no diploma at the end. However, if you do want a diploma still, there are some choices. There's a fully parent or student directed. Um, there's, there's a, I'm not sure what that $1,700 is, but the, your role as a parent is basically to provide the resources that your child needs. Sometimes it's student directed where they take control because at the, at the, at the grade 10 level, uh, students kind of their brain starts to switch on a little bit more and they, they, they're they able to manage themselves quite a bit more than even in grade nine. Uh, and I, I can attest to that because I was a high school teacher and I saw that switch from grade nine to 10 where they're, they just got more responsible or something. I'm really hoping my son who is in grade nine will have that happen next year, by the way, he's 14. Um, I'm, I'm just joking, but uh you you can delegate quite a lot of the work to tutors and to people in the community if if you need help with marking and with uh, like figuring out where resources are and your facilitator should be able to help you and there's tons of resources online now, thankfully. Um, okay, and then there's another option if you're near a school, uh, which is shared responsibility, and you can have shared responsibility where you have two teacher courses, and then you get less funding, and the school gets another portion of the funding from the government. Uh, shared responsibility is a different thing, and a lot of people look for that. That means that your child is like only doing half of the courses teacher directed, which means that they have a teacher online or in a school, and half of their courses student or parent directed. So that's a possibility too. Um, and, and these requirements are from a couple of years ago, by the way, because now there's no limits on what, what that percentage has to be. The government has a different model for funding now. So there, it can just be, it can be less or more than that. You, you're not limited to two courses if you decide to do uh, shared responsibility. So we'll talk more about um, the parent directed, the two types, um, which I kind of already mentioned. So you can go with the credits and with marks and with uh, ending up with a diploma, or you can do solo rate right to age 20. So that doesn't, you wouldn't, if you did the solo outcomes, which is those 22 outcomes in the home education regulation, you wouldn't get marks or credits and there would be no government diploma. But I should, I should make you aware that a diploma is really only a piece of paper. It's only a piece of paper that says that you finished 12 years of schooling. And some people put weight on it because it's from a government, but you as a parent can write a diploma. It's just a piece of paper. So I get asked quite often, what will they be able to get a job? And most job applications just ask if you have a high school diploma. It doesn't ask where it's from. And so a lot of parents write their own diploma printed out. And yes, you have a diploma because it's just a piece of paper saying you finished 12 years of schooling, right? So that that's something that other people do. There's also companies out there that actually write transcripts for you based on your real life experiences as a student. And so there there are companies that out there in the States that do that if, if you were interested in getting like a an, an official looking transcript. 
but we won't go too much into that because that's uh, we will talk about this is the when I keep mentioning solo these are the 22 outcomes that I'm talking about and you can see they're quite vague um like a read for information understanding and enjoyment like that's that's one of the outcomes the 22 outcomes that they require in Alberta for home education so that's the solo outcomes that I keep mentioning are these so that's in the whole Alberta homeschool uh regulation or home education regulation. Um, a lot of them are very vague and it's over 12 years of time that you have to meet these requirements. So if your child is in grade one, obviously you may not be able to explain Canada's political, social and economic systems, whoops, uh, and economic systems within a global context. You're probably not gonna be talking about that when they're in grade one. But so this is these outcomes are for 12 years of time. And uh, when you're doing uh, high school for marks or credits, uh, the parent is basically responsible and also in control of how that happens. Uh, aside from having to meet the outcomes, you can do it in lots of different ways. If you do uh, parent directed for marks and credits, uh, you have to provide coursework to the facilitator. You have to show them what, what is done and it has to be marked. The parent does not have to teach it. That is not a requirement, nor should any facilitator ask you that question, in my opinion. You can purchase packaged curriculum materials. There's quite a lot that are aligned with Alberta, um, like dynamic math, for example, I keep hearing about. A lot of the schools in Alberta right now also have all the Alberta Distance Le Learning Consortium materials because what happened a few years ago is the government defunded ADLC, which is Alberta Distance Learning Consortium. Uh, they were a school that existed that were providing and creating materials for Alberta. And they were required because they had received so much funding, they were required to make it available publicly for a certain amount of time. And they did. And most of the schools in Alberta, as far as I know, have downloaded all of that material and have it ready for you, probably for free. So if you if you decide that you want to go the credit route, your school may have those materials already and they should be provided to you for free. So there's a lot of different courses out there that you can purchase too, but there's also these free ones that are sitting in, in, the, in the, uh, like the Google drives of schools everywhere. <laughs> so if, if you're over 19 though, if a child is over 19, they can actually challenge the course, the diploma exams. That's another way that people get into universities and colleges is that a lot of university programs don't require a diploma, but they do require certain courses to have been completed. And, and, and usually they're at the 30 level, so the grade 12 level. And, and conveniently in Alberta, we have diploma exams. And so when you're 19 years of age, a student has the right to challenge the diploma exams. It costs about $25. You go to a writing center, you study for it first, and then you just write the exam. And on the student's transcript in Alberta will be that mark. It'll be worth 100% of that, of that course. Okay. And, and I do see in the comments that some boards charge for the USB that has the courses on it. Um, okay. So there are lots of schools that support um, uh, parent-directed high school for marks and credits, and these are the ones in in Al in Alberta right now that we know of that support that. A Wisdom, the Ursa, Peace Home Learning Connections, Bears Paw Christian School, Summit West Independent School, which is also called by design, Ignite. I don't know how to say that one. Coinonia. Mira Murnam and the School of Hope. And then these are the schools that do not support high, parent directed high school uh, for, for credit. So just so you know, if you're looking for a school, these are the ones that, that uh, support home education uh, for credits. Um, this is what a transcript looks like. So this is called a DAR. So if you hear of anyone saying DAR, it means detailed academic report. And this is what it would look like. So there would be the marks and credits over here and the school mark over here. And this school mark would be awarded by the teacher or the principal, but it would be based on what you 
what you say, um, what what your course assessment was and the conversations that they've had with you and what they've seen. So that's kind of how it works. Um, that's what it would look like. This is what a high school transcript would look like. So this is all of the final mark over here. Um, these That's an official transcript that you would get if you asked for one in order to get into post-secondary. Um, you would you would ask from this. There's also a, a website called MyPass that once you have your Alberta student number, you can log in and see what your transcript already has on it. Um, so you just have to sign up using the ASN or the Alberta student number, and you can go and see your transcript. Although the official transcript gets mailed from, from Alberta Ed directly if you ask for it for a post-secondary. Um, so I'd like to talk a little bit about boards and why they don't support parent-directed, because you saw that big list there of, of schools that do not support parent-directed home education for credits. Um, this year, the number has changed to $901 for parent-directed home education. So what happens in Alberta if you decide to go with either the solo outcomes or any parent-directed courses, the school gets $1,802 and they have to give you half. So 901 goes to you and 901 goes to the school. So it's not as much money as if they can convince you to go to a teacher or school directed program because they get 11,000 if they do that. So if they can convince you and make you feel insecure about your ability to teach your own child and your ability to direct their education and get credits, then they get a lot more money and it's worth it's worth a lot. If you have five kids, if you think about that, that's uh, over 12 years of time, that's uh, that's like half a million dollars, right? Uh, one, a fa one family of five. So it, it's a lot of money and there's huge incentive to make it difficult. So I, I just want to outline why why they do that, why, why, why the school system kind of tries to get people to go into the teacher directed courses is it's it's worth a lot of money. Um, I, I also like to say, too, it's not always based on money. When you're talking to an individual person in a school, they might not be driven by money, but they might be driven by an ideology um, where they think that it's better. They believe that it's better, but it might not be better for your child. So just keep in mind that just because someone else's ideas and their ideology and their uh, and their values are they, they might be different than yours and it's okay if they hold that opinion but it doesn't have to be yours so i hope that helps <laughs> okay so once your child is 20 on september 1st there's two routes so once you hit 20 the funding ends um but you do have to pay some fees after the age of 20 so it is better to try and finish um, by the age of 20, because the government funding stops at age 20. On if you if they're age 20 on if they're 19 on September 1st, they can still enroll in home education even if they turn 20 on September 2nd. But what if September 1st, age 20, the funding is gone. Um, so you so there is some choices though. Uh, you do have to pay a fee. It's like a post secondary fee. There are some outreach schools out there though. Uh, that being said, I know there's some outreach schools that take students for free. Uh, up here in Northern Alberta, I know of two that will take a student for free at the age of 20 because they, they're driven ideologically about helping people get what they need. One of the things you can do if you're 20 and you just and you haven't gotten any credits is you can just take the course bio 30 with no prerequisites. So that's kind of a bypass of all of the other things. And some, I have seen some schools actually award retroactive credits for 10 and 20 if you pass 30. So it depends on the school, it depends on the principal and their and their philosophies, but I have seen those, those things happen. Um, the benefits of doing it like this is that the, the final exam, the diploma exam is no longer worth 100% because then they will give you 70% uh, would be based on the coursework and 30% would be based on the final diploma exam. So it kind of makes it, um, if, if your child suffers from test anxiety, it kind of lowers the possibility that they'll fail uh, the whole course out, outright and, and just base it on that diploma mark. So there are other choices once your child gets to age 20. 
Um, I think, I think that one of the things that Judy likes to talk about is that this is, we're trying, what the Alberta Homeschool Association is trying to do is let you know of all your choices so that you know that it, you can do it your way. Um, a lot of schools out there, teachers, principals, and other parents and, and people in the homeschool world have very strong, strongly held opinions about how you should do this, but you do have lots of choices. And I, and I, 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 I don't want to make a comment about that 125 hours. I strongly disagree with making it a, a, an hourly thing because some kids can learn so fast that you, but um, one of the things that you can do when you go into high school is you can get work recognized that might not be recognized in the school system. Um, we're not just trying to look for shortcuts here or any privileges. We're actually just trying to find a different way to do, do education. So um, a lot, some of the, some of the questions we get is, is it legal? Um, actually, that usually comes with younger children too, parents that are new to home education, wondering if it's legal to do parent directed um, coursework because it seems illegal somehow when you first start. <laughs> How is this possible that we can do whatever we want? Um, it is legal um, with a parent directed course review. It's, it's, uh, based on the section six home education regulations. And it's based on the idea that kids can meet credits, credit requirements in the program of studies without a teacher and without doing it a certain way. So there's lots of different, uh, different things that you can hand in that might not, a teacher might not assign, but you, you can, so you can be a bit creative. So the parent directed course review is when students actually do the course. Um, they actually do all of, they go through all of the material, they do all of the, all of the things, they do the exams and they do the things. Another thing that they can do, some schools support, is something called a course challenge. Uh, they don't do the course, but they already have the knowledge and, and the competencies. So that means that they've proved it in a different way. Uh, so there's the course, course, parent directed course review and the course challenge. The course challenge is only really for if you already have the knowledge. So let's say you've been doing Saxon math and you've already covered everything in the program of studies for math 10C. Um, you can apply for a course challenge if you've already completed work and just have and, and so don't want to go through it again. Those are hard though, because schools are often reluctant to do it because Alberta Ed might um, review it. And if they review it, they might uh, it might throw the whole school in and, and they don't find that it meets the requirements. So they don't think that it was good enough that it might it might put the school under a microscope with Alberta education. So just so you know, some some schools are reluctant to do course challenges because of that, but they can do them if you if you have overwhelming proof that that your child is met. And usually what's required for a course challenge is an exam. At, so that you not only can you hand in what you've done already, but you can also um, do an exam and prove that you have the knowledge and the competencies already. And just so you know about the, the difference between those two things. Um, there's lots of different resources out there. Uh, there's, uh, there's textbooks, of course, you can buy them on Amazon and all sorts of places these days. Uh, lots of parents are selling their old textbooks uh, that they've already used. There's workbooks, there's websites, library books, games, movies, documentaries, online courses, audio materials, field trips, classes, family activities. Lots of things can count as long as you have evidence of them um, for, for credits. <laughs> here's some a choice. I mean, here's a, an example of Biology 20. This is the textbook and this is the key study guide. And in the key study guide, there is some practice questions and there's some exams. So it kind of takes you through what their course requirements are. And there's other there's other ways to do that too. So physical classroom, some people hire a teacher and split the costs. Some people get get a group and put a class together themselves. 
And what the school board does is it reports the credits and marks after a subject matter expert assesses for outcomes. And I know a lot of teachers, uh, facilitators, who if you have a tutor who has a, has has her his or her Bachelor of Education and has a teacher credentials in Alberta, and you have them marking the work, they won't even look at it because a teacher already assessed it. Why would you go through it again? So uh, just so you know that that if you find one of those tutors that's actually a Alberta certified teacher, it's a lot easier for for them to just go well. If, if an Alberta certified teacher marked this, then I don't need to mark, to go through it because obviously they're not going to lie. So just so you know, that's a that's a there's quite a, there's a few of them out there too. Um, so when you are actually doing this though, if if there if it's an ex, if it's a course especially a core course with an exam you should your parent given mark should be within 10 percent of the exam marks and that's for teachers too actually in the classroom is that if if the discrepancy between the final exam and the course mark is too great um it kind of throws into question the course mark first now that being said i know that some kids get test anxiety and I think a lot of facilitators will recognize uh, open book exams in that case. But j just so you know that it kind of should be the same, like similar to the course mark. So if you're giving 100% for a course mark and your child gets something like 25 on the final exam, um, th that facilitator is going to have to call into question the mark and, and go through it and see if, if there was a reason why that would happen. Um, the same way as they would themselves if they were in a classroom teaching kids and their course mark was really, really different from the final exam. And that's only for that's only for people who who uh, only for core courses with an exam, too. And feel free to ask any questions, because I think we're nearing the end of this presentation. Um, so some of the non-core courses, though, so there's things like foods, there's uh, there's there's courses like foods and all of those CTS classes um, that doesn't require exams. Often it will require photos or projects that they've done. Like this is a, obviously a foods class where they've cooked different things Um Often people will write a, a little reflection paragraph after each project. They'll have a video of them doing something. So this is one of the non-core courses. Um, so when one of the questions I just got is when I said section six portfolio review, does that mean the students do not need to take the exam from the school board? And the question, that's a really good question. It depends on the school board. So, and, and it often will depend on the teacher too, because some teachers have a really strong philosophy about not requiring exams if that's what a parent doesn't, if a parent doesn't want to do exams. And they, and quite often homeschool facilitators are against standardized testing, myself included. By the way, I'm, I'm a certified teacher too, and I, I, I don't, I don't love standardized testing. Um, so it will depend on the school board. If they require if they require an exam that's standardized, then they do, but a lot of schools don't. So if you don't like that, you can always switch schools, especially right now before the end of the year, <laughs> or before the end of September. Um, okay, so this is this is a non-core course. This is a CTS course. And and in, in phys ed too, it, you don't have to take an exam in phys ed. There's usually a nutrition component, uh, a component for CPR or first aid, and also the hourly activity, and you have to meet the five dimensions of activity in some way. So there's there's ways to to get those credits without any exams on these non-core courses. So I think we went over this already. This is English 30-1 proposal and summary of a course evaluation. Um, and so people would say that that sounds like a lot of work. <laughs> like, why would I do that? Like, you could just hand it over to a teacher online. That sounds easier. But there are different reasons why people do it. Um, school directed uh, and online schooling and even print based is there's no personalization to it. You have to do what the teacher says. And that's how you get the mark, period. 
and it's easier not to have to design your own course, but it's also not personalized to your child. And the requirements are set, set in stone. The teacher has the, the responsibility and the right to decide what kind of assessments that they're going to do, and, and that's not negotiable with them. Um, in a parent directed, you can, you, there's a lot more flexibility. Um, students sometimes are shy of participating in class and, and sometimes some teachers require participation in order to, to get marks. Um, let's say uh, there's sometimes uh, they don't like, dislikes lab, labs or any type of gross things. And instead of doing the lab, you can just watch a video about it. Um, if they don't like King Lear, his shakes in 10-1, one of the requirements is a Shakespearean play, but you can pick which one. Whereas if it's school directed, you can't pick which one. Um, sometimes parent, sometimes students actually prefer, prefer exams over written work. That's That's good. Then you can make a lot of your, you know, if you're good at exams and that's your, and that's your jam, then you can just decide to do mostly exams and that's okay. So you, there's a lot more flexibility and there's a lot more ability to demonstrate your competency and your skills and your, and your knowledge about that course in different ways. You can, if you're really strong at technology, you can do something in technology to prove that you know a Shakespearean play, like creating a, a some kind of multimedia uh, response to it like so there's lots of choices in home education when it's parent directed and it's not when it's school directed one of the uh one of the questions which option courses that don't have an exam like foods or studies are you free to do what projects you want or should we try to be follow what might be taught in the classroom so I'm going to use foods as an example. There's actually very specific requirements in the program of studies for the foods class classes, but there's a lot to choose from. Like when you're doing a foods class, you can pick which food classes you do. So there's a baking one and there's one for breads and there's one for, so there's actually, you can choose which food classes to take as long as you have the first prerequisite, which is foods 1010. So if you have 1010, which is a basic food safety course, then you then you can take any of the other ones and you can choose. And in that program of studies, there's some specific examples. Like for the baking one, you have to have a muffin and you have to have a cookie, and but you can choose what kind of cookie and what kind of muffin you make. That's just an example of, of the choices. So um, yes, you have to follow the program of studies, but because there's so many choices, if you go to... If you Google uh, Alberta uh, CTS courses, you'll come up with the government website where it, it lists all the, and there's there's hundreds, if not thousands of courses to choose from in, in the CTS course load. Another question uh, I have is the resources for parents of special needs kids. So their child has is on the autism spectrum and you're finding out a hard time where you fit. Um, and, and then they're asking if anybody has a Facebook group to refer to. And I'll let any parents who know about that, I, I will have something to say about that later on today because I attended a meeting with Con Communications earlier today. So I kind of have some, some information about that. Parent-directed home education, can you do work placements and apprenticeship? So that will depend on the school. Some schools support work experience credits and and report uh, and uh, support the RAP program, which is registered apprenticeship program, and some do not. And so some schools support it and some don't. And the reason that they might not support it is because it is they do have to have an off campus handbook in order to participate in the RAP program. And so some schools have that and some don't and some just don't have the structure in place yet in order to support um, work experience or RAP program, but some schools do. Um, okay, I, I see. So I'm gonna just put chemistry 20, 30. One of the reasons that people go parent directed is because it's so flexible. Um, in school uh, for this particular one, uh, there was 36 assessments, but maybe there might be nine in in a parent directed home education so you maybe read the textbook 
teach the self, teach yourself the concepts, work through chapter questions, write exam bank unit tests and a final exam and it's done. And the to, to, and again, the diploma exam marks have to be about 10% in, but in within the course mark. But if you are doing it like that, you, you could actually finish chemistry 30 with about nine summative assessments. So I'll explain that for a minute. There's two types of assessments in, in education. One is called formative and one is called summative. Formative assessments is when a student is learning. So they're doing assessments or, or assignments while they're still learning, that's called formative. And summative is when they have already learned it. So a summative assessment would be like an exam or, or something that they do at the end of a chapter. So you can do different assignments and not actually include them in the final mark because the student was still learning. And so it's not really fair. And you can just include the summative assessments, which are the bigger ones. And that could be um, nine of them. So it, it, it's just more flexible when you do a parent-directed course. Um, so diploma exams and final exams. Let's say your child has a lifelong passion for chemistry and has read and practiced and done experiments for fun. And should they be penalized for not doing the mind numbing four months of coursework that he already knows to demonstrate his competency? And so in Alberta, we do have a great system where students can prove competency without redoing work that they've already done and without having to prove it because they've already done it. Okay. <clears throat> so I, I'm, I, I do see another one, another question about prerequisites. If you're not going for a diploma, but we teach science 10 to our child without going for credits, can they do bio 20 for credits for possible university entrance? Or do they have to have the science 10 on the transcript in order to enroll in bio 20? Um, they, they have to have the official mark on the transcript to enroll in bio 20. That's the answer to that question. Um, however, if you've already done the work, you could just you could just write the course proposal, hand in what they've already done and, and uh, do the course assessment. So even if you've done it before, um, you can, you, your, your facilitator should be still able to accept that work uh, if you've already done it. There's no reason for them not to really. Um, each high school course is one to five credits. Those CTS courses are all worth one credit each usually. It's based on a model of hours. Not all teachers agree with that. I would be one of them. I wouldn't agree with hours being like it does. It shouldn't matter how hours because some kids learn so much faster than others. And each grade is worth about 35 credits and you have to get to 100 if you want a high school diploma. There is some planning sheets out there of how to how to get to the 100 credits and get all the core courses. Um, and here's kind of a more of a breakdown of, of the core courses like math and science. So there's, I already went through this math, science 14 versus science 10. Um, grade 11 is science 20, chem 20, bio 20, and physics 20, et cetera. Um, and I'd say that uh, Judy's right about this. If you take two or three cores, it's about three hours a day of work. And, and that's like, fall and winter, she kind of broke it down as how you could get your credits within three hours a day, depending on your child, of course. Um, so if we do some grade 10 credits, some grade 10 courses for credits, and my child decides to go back to high school, will he get credits for the courses we've completed, or will he have to do redo those classes? So if, so what happens is you submit the course proposal, the work, and the course assessment, the teacher awards the mark, she, she or he submits it to their principal, and the principal puts it into the student information system, also known as PASI. And when, when that happens, when it's submitted to PASI, it's, it's the same as if you went to a school building and got the credit. So when you get to the new school, if he goes back to school in grade 11, um, the school will pull up his academic report or his DAR, and they will see that credit on there and they would not have to redo it. And that's the answer to that question. So if you do it for credit, you don't have to redo it if you go back into a school because um, all facilitators are certified teachers 
and they have the right to submit uh, course, they, they have the right to give credits to students. That's why they're so careful, though, because they do put their certification online on the line every time they give credits to students for work. So that that's the answer. So the, the facilitator is a certified teacher who has the right to give out credits if they think that you have met the credit requirements in Alberta. Um, so and any school would respect that because we're all we all have to <laughs> we all have to go through the same uh, process and we are all putting our all facilitators are putting uh, their their uh, credentials on the line every time they give out credits. Um, diploma exams, everyone has to write socials and English for diploma exams because 30 level is required for a diploma for everybody. So there's four different months where you have, you can actually find the schedule online. So this is for the grade 12 exams. If your child is in grade 12, the right times are in January, April, June, oh, August and November, five times, sorry, not four. Um, you have to register in August to rewrite. Uh, it costs about $25 and it depends on where you write it because the government has different centers all over, all over, Alber all over Alberta writing centers. And then the marks, if you register in August, I think actually the deadline is September 1st this year. Uh, the marks are reported in time for university in the fall. Um, under 19, if you're un if the child is under 19, then they have to have a course mark as well, and then it's worth 70-30. But if you're, so it's only worth, the diploma exam is only worth 30% of the mark, but if the child is over 19 and not a child anymore, uh, the diploma is worth the diploma exam is worth a hundred percent of the mark. So if if, if they don't want to do the course and they just want to do the diploma exam, it'll be worth one hundred percent of their mark. Um, okay, I'm trying to keep up with the chat at the same time as doing this. Um, uh, this was about post secondary entrance, so just to like shorten it, it it's really depends on the program different programs require different entrance requirements um if you tell them that you've been home educating they often have different requirements than if you were going through the school system like the other kids so just so you know and and you do want to I know from entrance in university myself is they want to see something different sometimes. So volunteering and doing leadership things is really important for university entrance, even for kids in school, because they get thousands of, of applications. And if they don't have enough spots, they're going to pick something that's different. And I'll tell you a story. When I went to, when I went to do my bachelor of education in London, Ontario, um, I actually had an opportunity to speak to the person that evaluated my application and I asked him why I got in. <laughs> it's like, why did you pick me out over the, so there was 4,000 applications and only 800 spots and I got in. I was kind of surprised actually. And he said, I said, was it because I had high marks? He goes, oh no, everybody has high marks when they apply. It has nothing to do with that. He said, you know why? Because you were a puppeteer for a, you were a volunteer puppeteer for that program. He said, and that was weird. So I thought that was interesting. So I approved your application. It was like something that small is why I got into that program. So do weird things, do different things, go volunteer, uh, take part in leadership because it does matter for university entrance if that's something that you wanted, your child wants to do. Um, so you can look up, this is the University of Victoria where uh, Judy's daughter went. Uh, there is there so in this case there was an admission requirement to be a secondary school graduate so the homeschool applicants must present proof of completion of a program that has met graduation from a recognized educational jurisdiction and so her daughter would have had to get a diploma um so there there are some schools that will require diplomas it's just not all of them just so you're aware it's not completely um, completely easy. I know that none of the Ontario universities require a diploma uh, from from any uh, educational jurisdiction because I did a research project on that once. Upgrading 
uh, after 18 years, uh, she was just talking about scholarships. Um, and so when you're in high school, you are eligible for scholarships, but after 18, you're not. So scholarships are often important to pay for university. And there are actually lots of, there might not be scholarships, but there are quite a lot of grant programs out there. So if your child is going into post-secondary, I would definitely look up the list, which is usually quite long of grant applications that you can fill out. And sometimes you can get hundreds or thousands of dollars for a grant application. Um, just so you know, uh, there's no funding after age 20, but just so you're aware, actually, kids can start earning credits in grade nine for grade 10. They just can't earn credits for grade in grade nine for for all the courses. Like you can't get work experience courses. You can't get uh, 20 level classes. You can't go to the grade. You can't take a grade 11 class in grade nine, but you can take all the grade 10 ones except for work experience because you have to be a certain age to do that. Um, so you can actually start a child can actually start earning the, their diploma and for credits in grade nine. Not all, not all um, schools will do that, but a, a lot of them will, especially if they're highly supportive of home education and parent-directed education for credits. They, they will let you start in grade nine because you can. Um, one of the questions is, what are your thoughts on challenge exams for credits versus going directly to the diploma exam? So challenge exams is if you're trying to meet the 100 credits uh, in order to get a diploma. And if you go directly to the diploma exam, you're, pro you're probably not, you don't have enough credits to get a diploma. So it depends on if you need a diploma or not. That's the answer. So some, some people don't feel they need a diploma for what they, their child wants to do. And some people feel that a diploma is useful. It's a lot of work. So it depends on what wh where you want to go with it. Okay, so you actually have five years for high school, not just the typical three. Um, I know that uh, in schools, they're in in a school they actually their funding drops after the third year for a student, so they they try to rush them through in three because they get more funding for that student if they can finish them on time. And as soon as the grade 12 is up and they're coming back for more courses, they have to pay out more than they're getting from the government sometimes. Um, but that's not a consideration for homeschool programs and homeschool boards because they get the same amount no matter what. Is it possible to write only core di courses, diploma exams, and get retroactive credits for the related courses? then a mix of parent-led and teacher-led for other courses to earn through the, enough credits for the Alberta Diploma? And the answer is no. They, can't, they cannot give you, a principal cannot give you retroactive credits just for writing a diploma exam. Um, and principals who do do the retroactive credits, not all of them will do it. Um, they, they do it when you're in their school and they can see that there's competency, not and, and diploma exams are kind of far away. And so, no, they. That I would be very surprised if you found a principal that would be willing to do that. Um, do many of the scholarships available for post-secondary require diplomas? Are there scholarships available through the parent-directed route without credits? You can apply for scholarships doing a parent-directed route, and it will depend on the school because all schools have different scholarships. And uh, and no, they don't. If you're in a university, you can apply for those grants. Regardless, because I know I did, I was 27 years old when I started university. I had a daughter already and I applied for a single parent grant, for example, and that none of them, so they all have different requirements. If you go to one of the universities and look at their scholarships and grant programs, you'll see each one is very, very different. And it's based on, uh, it's based on really spe specific criteria and based on really specific philosophies. So uh, that that you'd have to go look into the school of your choice first and kind of see what they're offering for grants. And grants are often not run by the school itself, but, but run, by, run by a committee just for that grant, because it's often linked to donations and funding given out by people or by organizations. Okay, um, so 
you can go to Learn Alberta. Uh, there's for like for guidance on how to get uh, those what credits are required. You can go through boards for discounts on the keys. Like I said, a lot of boards offer the free ADLC materials, or I guess sometimes they have a fee. Um, 100%, so just so you're aware, you have to meet 100% of the requirements in the program of studies in order to get a mark. Um, the student mark is a percentage of the outcomes that have competency. And you have to follow the Alberta Program of Studies for marks and credits. So you must teach what's in the program of studies, even if you don't agree with it. And I know a lot of people don't agree with certain things in the curriculum. You can teach it in different ways, though. So I, I'll give you an example. There's there's a question on one of the final exams in social studies that a lot of people kind of run into that they don't they really don't like where where it's going. And it sounds very pointed, like you have to write about this. So I, I remember saying to a parent that, you know, you don't have to write for it, though. You can write an essay against that idea. Like, don't don't just don't just I know what the textbook is leading you to say, but you can say the opposite and provide in your essay, you can provide examples of why you're right and why the other point of view is wrong. So there is at least there is a way to like you you can present information as a, as a critical analysis instead of just accepting uh, what the textbook says. And the same, I guess, for evolution. If if you ran into something you disagreed with and you were religious and you thought that evolution was false, I mean, there is a way to talk about evolution and argue against it. So just so you know, there's a lot more freedom when it comes to meeting those outcomes. Um, for entrance, university entrance for homeschoolers do dual credit uh, courses help yes they do because you can get credit at college and at the high school level at the same time so that that if a school is offering dual credit it means that they have a relationship with the other with the college or university and and you can be taking high uh, you can be taking a credit course at a university and also be getting credits for high school at the same time so it count two times basically so a, a word on online schooling, it's always school directed, always teacher directed. You must do the assignments. There's often accountability, engagement is marked like discussion times. It's controlled by the school and by a teacher. Um, they can decide not to allow you to rewrite an exam or they can decide you to let you. Um, it's really heavy on written ass assessments um, and 50, well, phys ed is not always 50 hours of writing assignments, but sometimes. And they might even have to self-mark and self-teach, even though the teacher awards the credits. You, you know, so teacher-directed, school-directed programs in the Alberta Homeschool Association's view is not always the best thing for students, I guess is what we're trying to say. <laughs> um, so this is an example of an online course for phys ed, there is 30 lessons to this one. And uh, that's quite shocking, actually. And there's six online quizzes. And, and of course, they have to do fitness assessments, and they have to do simulations and activities. And the true, the true um, outcomes in the Alberta Program of Studies for Physical Education 10 is not that heavy. It's, it's not. It's like a nutrition assignment. It's meeting the meeting the requirements of the five dimensions, and it's a you know a first aid or a CPR knowledge demonstrating that. So, how do you start? Um, you must have your you must be registered if you want to get credits with a homeschool board in Alberta by September twenty eighth this year. Um, you should print off the Alberta Program of Studies outcomes if possible, or at least ask the school if they have like a, a parent version of it. <laughs> sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. You would have to write a proposal for each course that you want credits in. Um, you have to have a program plan in by September 30th usually, or September 29th this year. 
Um, so, and, and different schools require different things for program plans. Some are really easy to fill out, some are really difficult. It depends on what school you pick. Um, you should purchase the textbooks that you need for those courses. And you, you do have to provide that. Uh, at some point, you, you'd have to provide. Your facilitator should be able to help you with the course proposal, especially in the first year. And, and then look into what, what they're gonna require. Like some boards are really firm on final exams and some aren't. So you, you kind of have to look at what board you're registering in and what the requirements are going to be. And you have some time still, There's it's only September the 12th today. So you do have a few days now to start if you, if you don't have a school yet to kind of look into what they're requiring first and they're, and they're different. And sometimes, it's different in between facilitators too, because uh, certified teachers have different ideas about those things. <laughs> um, Judy highly recommends these types of resources like the key study guide and the SNAP guides. Um, and she she has this slide in here again. Um, the kids do still need adult support though. Um, they, I mean, you kind of need, sometimes they get stuck and kids don't like to say I'm stuck. Sometimes some children don't like to admit that they are lost in, in something. They probably will, especially in the first year, need you to help them write course proposals and court, and you will have to do the course assessment yourself, even if it was marked by a tutor, um, because the child can't do that. You have to do it. But but welcome accountability for them. They're they're starting to get old enough to accept accountability, and it will really prepare them for the future if they can learn how to plan and organize their own time. I think that's kind of important. Um, someone asked, do you, do you know anyone who has successfully used the SAT or ACT to enter the U University of Calgary since those are the requirements for international students? I, I I personally do not know. And I, I'm I'm slightly aware of of requirements for international students, but only in British Columbia because I used to work in a Chinese international school for two years before I came to Alberta. So I know that there's different requirements for international students and different tuition too, actually. Um okay. Do you have a Someone asked, do you have to have a course proposal for all your courses for the whole year by September 30th? Or if you were going to do two cores in fall, two in winter, could you just submit a plan for what you're doing now? So when I said the September 30th deadline, it was for the program plan, which is different than the course proposal. So each, uh, so I, I think most facilitators would say yes to that two cores in fall. So the program plan is actually what you're basing your reimbursements on. And the course proposal is something completely separate. It's for credits. So that that would be worked out between you and a facilitator. That's the answer. So those are two different things. What, what I was talking about was program plans. And most schools require them by the end of September because they have to have them in in order to be fully registered. But the course proposals are something different. So the course proposals are just a, a for credit thing, which is kind of separate from the reimbursement process. I hope that helps. And I'm hoping I'm not missing anything. Does anyone wanna have, does anyone have questions that they wanna say out loud or if I'm missing any, any of these questions, please let me know. Um, Judy has a lot of slides on the different requirements. Um, so these are the requirements uh, of English 20, 10, 20, and 30. They have the same content, but the dash two stream is less challenging on critical analysis than dash one. And it actually the dash two does not require an essay and the dash one stream requires an essay for English 10 dash one. They have to have a film media uh, analysis. They have to read a play. They have to read a novel. They have to read poetry and write poetry. They have to read and write short stories. They have to have journals 
Um, one of the plays uh, must be Shakespeare in Dash 1, I think, but it can be a modern play in Dash 2. And there are some Canadian texts have to be included as well. So some, uh, so there's, so the diploma, and this is all to prepare them for the diploma exam in, in grade 12. It will be consist of literary devices, which means like the the words that they use for literary devices. Um, it's usually multiple choice. There's going to be a personal response essay and a critical analysis essay on that final exam. So you have to prepare them by having them practice those things. And it's better to do it at each. And of course, in grade 10, the rubric or the the little thing that tells you how to mark the essay is going to look very different in grade 10 than it does in grade 12 because the, it kind of ups the requirements each year and it gets more difficult to meet the requirements. Um, I'm just going through these questions and making sure I have answered all of them. Um, okay. So here's some, it, she has English in here because it's one of the most difficult ones to find resources for. There is this textbook in grade 10, but there's also other ones like an anthology of short stories that teachers use. And then in grade 11, they have this viewpoints. But again, there's another anthology of short stories and, and poetry that uh, they use. So this is not the only resource you would have. You would have more. And here's an approved resources list, uh, novel short stories and films for grades four to 12 in Alberta. Um, it's on openalberta.ca under publications. And for social studies, these are the academic dash one classes. So globalize perspectives on globalization are uh, is grade 10, exploring nationalism is grade 11 and I perspectives and ideology is in grade 12. And then these are the textbooks for the dash two. Again, understanding globalization is grade 10. This one is grade 11 and this one is grade 12. So they're the same content, but just at different levels. Here's math 10C. So these are the 10, the uh, 10, 11 and 12 uh, textbooks. There, there are more than this, by the way. This is just some of them. There's other ones as well. And here's kind of how it doesn't matter what happens in grade nine, you can either take 10C, 10-3, or if you don't want credits and you're still taking Alberta is 10-4. So anything with a dash four after it is not for credit. That's uh, for a certificate of completion at the end instead of a diploma. So if you're wanting a diploma, don't even look at dash four classes at all. Um, but these dash dash threes in math are all for credits. It's the uh, trades and business math. And then 10C either branches off into 20-1 or 20-2. And or and then this will branch off only to 30-1. And you can always go down. So if you get to 20-1, it's too hard. You can go down to 20-2, but you can't go up. You have to go take the prerequisite so if you get to thir the 30 level and you've taken 20-2, you can't take 30-1, you can't take 30-1, you have to take 30-2 or 30-3. Okay. And here's science. There's science 10 will lead to biology, physics, chemistry, earth science, and or science 20. Um, and these the, the uh, chemistry 20 and 30 is the same textbook. It just, uh, they do half and half. And I think it's the same with physics actually. So you can read, work out questions, use the exam bank or the key, review questions. There's four unit exams in the key, one final and, and then eventually the diploma exam. This is just for credits. And then biology is very similar and physics as well. Career and life management. Um, quite often people will submit photos because there's different types of uh, different types of things required in the career and life management course. You can either get five or three credits depending on it. Um, you have to write a resume. There's Myers-Briggs exams that they can take to discover who they are and what they're good at. They can go into career pro profile, go to career fairs, write some budgets, 
talk about communications and even read the seven habits of highly effective teens and, and write about it in order to get that comm credit, which is a lot more interesting than what they do in school sometimes. <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop sharing now because that that is uh, pretty much what I wanted to share today and, and it is getting later than I I thought it would. I talked a lot. And I'm going to open it up for questions. So here's uh, some of the things that Judy uh, recommends, like Khan Academy, uh, Spark Notes, especially for Shakespeare. There's something called No Fear Shakespeare that you can purchase that will help you translate a Shakespearean play. Um, there's peer-to-peer -peer group studies. You can hire tutors. There's lots of online videos. There's massive open online courses. There are so many choices to get credits. And, and to learn the material. Um, I think someone asked, uh, yeah, thank you for reminding me about the con communications. I'll answer this question first. I think you said it. Uh, is there a list we can start doing in grade nine to start high school credits already? So yes, you can take Phys Ed 10. You can take any of the core courses, math, social studies, science, and, and uh, language arts at the grade 10 level you can take any 10 level CTS class. Those are all, those are all possibilities of, of what you can take in grade nine to get grade 10 credits. So, and, and so I'll, I'm gonna stop sharing because I did, someone mentioned autism today um, and, and needing specialized support. So Con, I met, I was one of the people that met with Con Communications today and ASCA, which is the Alberta Independent School Organization. And they are offering um, something ca called uh, it, Con Communications, which is a brand new service last year where they have opened up uh, specialized supports for students in Alberta. And in Alberta now, you can go to Con, Con Communications and you can get, um, you can apply for an assessment or, or, or apply for an intake. You So if I can, I'm going to try to find it right now so I can share it with you. Um, Con Communications. So this is not like Con Academy. Uh, Con Communications provides SLP services. Uh, they provide OT, they provide supports for autism. Um, and so I'm going to share my screen again. And it's now finally popped up on there. So Con Communication Services is right here. Um, and what you would do if you went to this, so it's concommunicationservices.com. This is paid for by the government of Alberta. So this does not cost you anything. You would go up to this tab here. Put on auto. Put on the wrong. Hey, Put someone, on auto. Someone's mic is on. I'm gonna try to find out who it is and turn it off. <laughs> um. There we go. Okay. So this is the parent. Uh, this is for Alberta Home Education. They told us today that they were supporting. They have uh, SLPs, so speech language pathologists, OT, psychology, physical therapy, behavior and mental health concerns, reading consultants. They have a chatter social skills program. They have autism and they do specialized assessments. And they, and they also now, as of this month, will be also supporting kindergarten for those of you who might have kindergarten as well. So what you would do if you went to Con Communications is you would do a home ed booking um, and you would sign up for an initial consultation. You can only do it if you're parent directed and you would just fill out this form. And what would happen next is they would meet, I, I believe in the next one, you actually can pick a meeting date um, and they would contact you and it would be a, a remote, a, a remote um, consultation where you would be meeting with an intake worker. And after that intake worker is finished, they would make a recommendation about what services you need, specialized services you need. And then you would be set up with a OT, a SLP, or whatever specialist they think you require. Sometimes those are done in person and sometimes they're done virtually. 
and what it is is to help you move forward not they, they won't come in and and do it for you but they will give you resources and ways to help your child so that's that's kind of what con, con communications is doing this year um there is it is being recorded by the way and judy will be um Ju judy will be sharing that out on our website for the one of the questions so for con, do you need a separate booking for each child if you have multiple requests? And I don't know the answer to that question because I've never been through this process yet. <laughs> so I don't know. if so Does somebody else know that question? So I, I, I'm, I'm not sure about the answer. You, you, you would probably have to ask them or go through the process of registering and see if you can make have one meeting for multiple children or not. Okay. Okay, you do have to. So that answer the question for con communications, do you need to do a separate booking for each child if you have multiple requests? And the answer from another parent is yes. Is there any other questions? I want to open it up for a few minutes to questions that I haven't answered yet. If I missed one of your questions, please please ask again. It was hard to do it two, two things at the same time. Okay. Well, I I thank everyone for coming today. I hope that you got the information that you were um, that you were looking for today. If you if you have not and you did, had a question and you were shy to ask it, please uh, please reach out to Judy or I, and we can answer your questions. I will put my uh, I'll put my email in here right now. It's my personal email, and. Uh, I just want I just want to make sure that you have all the information you need moving forward. And just so you know, although I mentioned being a certified teacher and a former principal, I'm actually here as a board member of the Alberta Homeschool Association today, not not as anything else. So I'm I'm here just to give out information about that. <laughs> just so you know. I know it's it's super intimidating at first, isn't it? <laughs> I'm I'm glad that I I helped because I I know it's really hard at first when you first start out and like I said the first year is so hard because you're not sure what you're doing and uh, and but it does get easier in the second year if you decide to go parent directed for high school yes so thank you all for coming today I really appreciate the time you took it was an hour and a half and that is awesome I I and please. Uh, reach out if you have any other questions to either Judy or I or any of the board members of Alberta Homeschool Association. We really appreciate your attendance today. And uh, if if you need help, let, let us know. And I hope everyone has a really good evening and a great year this year. Thank you.